All right. Happy Monday, everybody. Uh, Joe Carollo, I'm back at Carollo's Corner at It's All About Scores.com with episode seven of the Mike Wilson Show. Uh, Mike, as you know, is the head coach of Shallock High School Football. Mike, how are you tonight? Very good. How about yourself? Uh, good, good, good. Uh, I, I guess I have to mention this. Uh, the sports world lost uh, two legends today, Dikembe Mutombo and uh, Pete Rose. I, I just you know. saw Pete Rose about five minutes ago. Same here. Yeah, I'm, Crazy. In, a little, I'm in a little bit of shock. Uh, getting back to Southern New Jersey, uh, big victory Saturday over Salem. I got to see a little bit of the tape, saw some long runs. Uh, I didn't get to watch a lot of the defense yet, but, uh, with, uh, tell us about last Saturday. What, what do you, what you, what you got cooking from last Saturday? Well, we want offensively want, we wanted to manage big plays. We were able to do that. We got some big passes early in the first quarter. We were able to jump out to a 21, nothing lead. And, uh, we held on to that. We, we moved the ball. We ended up with like 250 on the ground, 100 in the air. And defensively, we played very well. We held them to, I believe, like 12 yards on 25 carries. Wow. That's a good yeah. defense. I'll get to take a look at that later. How'd you like the new field down there? Oh, I loved it. I mean, it's nice being on campus and everything else. So, yeah, I, I saw that. I saw they have a new scoreboard and everything. Um, coming into this Saturday, coming up, I mean, how does that help you with this? I mean, this is one of the, I know you don't like looking ahead. You take it day, you know, week by week. Yeah. We finally get to talk about this. This is one of the games I've been looking forward to, the Paulsboro game. How does this help you guys coming into uh, what might be, I'd say, your biggest test in Cedar Grove? Well, I mean, I think we're playing good football right now. We keep getting better every week. I mean, uh, the calendar is turning to October when it starts to really count. Yeah. Um, and it's a playoff game in October, early October. I mean, um, playoff seedings, all that stuff. So, I think, I mean, they got, what, four wins. We have three wins. So it's a big game from both sides. It's going to be a good football game. Yeah, I'm going to get to the seedings in a minute. Uh, PowerPoints are up, and I guess it, after everybody has at least four games, it's always, I guess, kind of safe to start talking about them and speculating a little bit. Um, what do you? Uh, what could you tell our viewers about Paulsboro, uh, this year's version of Paulsboro? I know the tradition runs deep. Uh, I, I know they were down last year. I believe they made a resurgence. I like what I saw in them a couple of weeks ago. What's your take on them? Um, they're good. They have they have some very good athletes and stuff like that. I mean, they're scoring points. They're playing solid defense. Um, they they got themselves back. I mean, last year obviously was just like, just an anomaly, which you would expect from a story program like that. So it's gonna be a good test for us. Right. What's uh, what about the matchup? Like, what what's it gonna take to beat them, and uh, what's it gonna take to for them to beat you guys? I, mean, I think in a game like this, it's gonna come down who makes the least amount of mistakes. Right. Which and I know you. That type of stuff. I think that's what's going to come down to. Um, they're very good. I think. I think. I mean, we're we're playing better football right now. It's going to be a very good game. Right, because I know in the two losses you have, you did attribute uh, attribute a lot of your mistake, a lot of a lot of that to the mistakes you guys made. Uh, you've been paying any extra attention to detail when it comes to those uh, small mistakes, which turned into you know big consequences. We tell the kids every day: little things matter, and the little things will take care of the big things. We tell them all the time, you have to focus on the pr the process, not the results. And the process is taking your one play at a time and what's your job during that play, because that's all you can control. And right. we're getting better with that. And um, we got better with that on Saturday. Of course, there's always things to clean up. Uh, we felt that we left points on the field. Uh, we had one too many penalties. Um, we won a turnover battle Saturday, which was a huge win for us, get back on that way of things. So, again, just focusing on each play at a time and focusing on the process over, over results. Right. Well, as after scouting them, what do they need to do to beat you guys? Put, put, uh, put the shoe on the other foot for just a minute. To beat us, I think you have to stop our run game. We got a very good running run uh, game. I, Reggie I, Allen has close to 500 yards already. Um, we run the football very well. Um, we throw our quick game very well. I think you have to make us earn it. You got to get us to third and long, second and long. If you do that, you'll be all right. If you're able to um, move the ball on us defensively, um, I think that way, that way we don't get yourself in the third and longs. So I think we have a pretty good pass rush, things like that. I mean, I think it's just like football you see on any level, like who right. could stay out of third and long the most. Exactly. Um, getting back to, um, the playoffs, uh, the seedings, I was looking at the group one power rings. You have Woodstown at number one, Haddon Township, number two, uh, Shore Regional followed by Glassboro and Paulsboro. You guys are at number seven right now. Yes. And 
this is big for you. I mean, th th this is going to matter quite a bit as far as it comes to seeding because I think a loss here is going to drop you back into that second bracket. Not the second bracket, the second, the lower half of the bracket, which is going to make, uh, you know, a first round, first round playoff a lot harder. You want to try and get the easiest first round game you can. You know that. Well, I mean, our goal, our goal every year is to have home playoff games. So you look at it to get a home playoff game, you got to be in the top eight. Yeah, and and yeah, and this is gonna. I think this game is gonna have significant bearing on that. Oh, I, Joe, I think so. I mean, I think it's a it's the start of a long stretch for us. You got Paulsboro, and then we have three more after that. All playoff teams, all with multiple wins. Um, because as we all know, the power points now stress quality wins over group right. size schools. And so, um, and strength of schedule and things like that. So we have a good. I mean, our strength of schedule is right up there. I think. I don't know what did somebody tell me. When you look at our opponent's strength schedule, we have the third toughest in Group One right now, based on what's going on right now. Checking so, out man. right now, your OSI is forty six point eighty three, which is actually the second best. Okay, Woodstown is miles above everyone at sixty eight sixty two. Uh, now, but you're the seventh seed because you have a UPR of six point two. I know a lot of people aren't familiar with the uh, this new process, so I'm, you know I'm sorry if I'm. Sp Speaking another language now because I really don't understand it myself, Mike. <laughs> but uh, you guys, it, it, I think in the in the coming weeks, this is a great chance to climb up because you're going to be playing four teams. Who do you, who do you have next? Uh, Woodbury? No, that's at the end. Well, we have Gloucester City. Gloucester City. For last more than Woodbury. Yeah. So I mean, either way, even with some of the you know so, some losses, this is so weird the way they set it up now. You could actually move up. So now. Now's the time to move up because you're playing, you know, probably the hardest stretch of your schedule. Uh, this is going to get you those home games and hopefully, a, you know, a more favorable first round match so you don't have such a gauntlet to run through. Oh, I mean, absolutely. The, the, the goal is, like I said, our goal is we want to play home football games. I mean, I think most people want to do that. Always, we feel like we play better at home. Um, again, it's it's one week at a time. I mean, we can only control the controllables. I agree with you. We talked about this privately. I don't understand it either with the formulas and all that stuff. It was so much easier years ago. Yes. You can count power points and everything else. Right, basic math. Basic math. Now, I mean, look, what can we control? We have Paul's bar on Saturday. And then go just one week at a time, one day at a time. That's all we can control. If we take care of business, I think we'll be just fine. Yeah, I agree. And it's just funny. You tried it years ago. You can speculate what's going to happen here with this OSI. It's a lot harder to figure out. Yes. I know uh, some people have pretty much almost figured it out. But, it's, it, but it depends. Like... Your game against, I mean, let's say this was the last week of the season. Okay, your game against Paulsboro in and of itself isn't going to decide everything because maybe 15, 20 other games are going to mess with everybody's OSI. And that's uh, that's what's so difficult. I can't even begin to get into it because, like I said, I don't know it myself. But It just comes down to winning the football games. Winning the football games. You have you every week. And you yeah. do that, you'll be okay. Yeah, it's all you could do. If you win enough of them. You're going to get in, and then yes. once you get in, everything's great. Uh, probably the most important thing, especially for a group one school, health wise, how are you guys health wise heading into this stretch? We're very healthy, we have we have zero zero injuries. All right, knock on knock on wood with that. Yeah, knock on wood, obviously. I mean, <laughs> but um, yeah, we, we, we take pride in our conditioning, we take pride in our weight room. Um, and I think in the last couple of years, we've had we have not had a lot of key injuries. Um, it's the way we take care of our kids. Yeah, that's, and that's going to be the key because I think, especially in a Group One school, the loss of one player could really rock the boat. I mean, flip the forget about rocking the boat; it can flip the boat over. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that we think we have pretty good depth. We stretch our roster as far as we can. I think we figured it out on Saturday. One of my coaches said thirty-six different kids touched the field for a meaningful snap on Saturday out of fifty-one. That's a big deal. Yeah, I mean, so we play a lot of kids. We rotate kids in key spots, um, and I think that uh, contributed to our health. Um, we, we don't have anybody that plays two ways all the time that at least being rotated somewhere. So I think that all takes consideration of, we have a long season, you are a group one school. And right now we have a good roster with a, with a good size depth and we're using it all. Right. And it's funny, that's really going to help down the line, especially in the third quarter of each game and week to week, you're going to be you know, a little less banged up and, uh, you know, every little thing that's going to help you take advantage of, especially being such a small school. Uh, oh, and absolutely, lot. and that's what we've been focusing on is developing our depth so we can use it and stretching our roster as far as we can. And that's one of the, that's going to pay dividends down the road. Um, I hope so. So, you know, hey, before we head out, uh, going around the rest of South Jersey, uh, what did you think of some of these games last Friday? And I think Winslow has established themselves as the consensus number one team right now. Yeah, I mean, I saw that, and I mean, again, I mean, 
Group four, group four is loaded. I'm sure Winslow and Millville will see each other again. Yeah, that'll happen again. Uh, as of right now, though, I think they're standing head and shoulders above everyone. Yes. I mean, you never know what could happen down the road. They have Mainland coming up in a couple of weeks. Uh, I know Mainland lost a tough one to uh, the prep Friday night. Uh, Cherokee dropped one to Atlantic City, which really rocked group five. I mean, that just turned group five upside down, which – it yeah. makes it inter- it makes it interesting. You need these upsets uh, to, from an entertainment standpoint. You need a couple of these upsets to make it more exciting, make it non predictable. And I think that that's one of those games. You know, I don't have any affiliation to either Atlantic City or Cherokee, but you know, the fact that Atlantic City won, it just changed everything. Oh, a hundred percent. I mean, I just think. I mean, it's October football now. I mean, we got four weeks left in the regular season, and yeah. like you said. Every game counts, and one game will affect the next 15, and we'll just see how everything lays out at the end. Yeah, exactly. All right, Mike, uh, I want to thank you for again for coming on the show. Uh, I'll see you guys on Saturday morning. What time is it, 11 o'clock? 10.30 in the morning, Joe. It's 10.30 now, okay. Yep, 10.30, man. Kick it, off 10.30 in the morning. It was for 11, I believe, at one point in time. They might have moved it. Uh, it's been 10.30 as far as I know. So. All right, well, I'll see you guys out there. All right. Thanks, Joe. Appreciate right, it, man. Good luck, Mike. See you Saturday. Thanks again for coming on the show. Uh, Joe Carullo from Carullo's Corner at allaboutscores.com. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks, guys. Thank you All very right, much. Mike, you have a great night. You too, Joe. Bye-bye.